Morning, everybody. It's chilly out. So much for the last fire. Uh, I've been burning steady in here. It's spring, but uh, she's still fighting us. Let's head to the bench. I'll show you what's going on today. Okay, we're over at the bench. How's everybody doing today? Super glad you guys enjoyed the echo. That was a lot of fun. We're gonna have to do that again. We'll do another. Uh, we'll do another how to do a power saw build. How to build a power saw. Um, yeah, that was fun. Uh, again, guys, just showing you guys my methods. Again, that's not the only way to pour a saw, but that's how I do it. Um, I don't use the same numbers on every saw, but you guys can get it. And and as you port more saws. You're going to build saws that you like, and those are the ones that you're going to study, and you're going to you're going to extrapolate that knowledge and apply it to the next saw. And it could be any saw. Um, maybe we'll do we'll do something with different transfers, or maybe a 50 cc saw next. Um, wait and see. I'll I'll cook something up. Uh, I got a couple of 50 cc saws over on the shelf there that we can do. Anyhow. I'm here on the bench again. We got Buckins McCullough. Um, you know, we, we redid the recoil. Um, I went over it. I had a broken screw for the recoil on the top here. It was broken flush. Uh, I extracted that last night. It came out pretty easy actually. So um, that was good. So what are we doing today? Well, you guys saw I vacuum pressure tested it. I just, I did that. You guys can hear, the saw's a little slow to get back down to idle. Now, I've talked to a lot of you guys. McCullough's tend to run like that, um, a lot of them. Um, big heavy clutch, big heavy crank, and a heavy flywheel. Um, this, that might just be how this saw runs. It's not lean, the plug looks, you know, golden brown. Um, you know? Uh, that's just how these run. I'm going to try and get rid of that, but we don't know. That's how they run. And uh, me being me, I'm going to go over this saw and make sure it's the best saw that I can build for Bucking or anybody. That's just how I am. Whether it's for me, Bucking, or one of my buddies, um, if I'm going to work on a saw, I'm going to make it the best it can be. So I did my back and pressure test. It passed with flying colors. I don't have an air leak. Um, I went through the carburetor. I put a new uh, I put a new diaphragm on the top and uh, a new needle and set it up with my factory carb tool. I'm going to show you guys that carb tool. Okay, this is a Walboro carb tool. You see the bottom? It says STC. You put that and you make sure that the uh, the metering lever, which is attached to the needle, is flush with that, okay? That's how you set your heights. There's all the different carbs. We'll, uh, we'll do that on a video. I'm just gonna hang this up. We'll do that on a video sometime. I'll show you guys, okay? I went through the carb. Carb looks wicked. It's clean. It was clean the first time I looked at it, and it's still clean now. Because remember, we split this tank, and I, I cleaned it up. There's no corrosion. The filter's good. So again, what does that leave? This saw, it's hard to restart. It had orange spark. Um, I took the points and condenser off of my Promac 55, put it in here. Actually, I just put the condenser in here, right here. The saw runs, okay? Uh, I fired the saw up and it's, it's really rich and idle. It's kind of spitting fuel out, again, which points back to the carburetor. If your metering lever is too high, okay, your needle opens too much, you let too much fuel into the carb, which will flood your saw. Um, it might clean up at high RPM, but it won't idle. It'll, it'll just choke itself out. Well, that's how this saw is running. So I pulled the carb off again, and it's like, no, metering lever is perfect. There's no problems, okay? Uh, I put a new, I'll show you guys all this when we're up close. I put a new impulse line in this thing, uh, one out of Tygon. Uh, I like Tygon, it doesn't leak, it stays pliable in all weather, okay? I made new gaskets again. Um, I changed the little 
the little um, phenolic spacer that goes underneath the intake. I changed that with a spare one. Um, what else did I do to this saw? I had a rear mount, which turns out to be the same as a front mount. There's two little threaded inserts. I punched those out with a punch and mounted that. Ben Shelton, thanks buddy. It was funny guys, I was just about to email Ben Shelton and say, hey buddy, you, you saved my butt. Uh, he, uh, he sent me a small bag of parts um, when he sent that Promac 800 and he saved my butt because that mount was in that bag. Ben, thanks buddy. Um, again, you guys really help out this channel and you keep the, 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 the power saw builds progressing. Okay, so we got a new front mount. I recurved the handlebar. This thing was leaning one way. Okay, it was leaning uh, like this. So when you cut, it was actually cutting to the left. Okay, um, again, this thing's 45 years old. Uh, it's It's been around, it's been used and abused and uh, we're making it the best that we can be uh, or, or the best that it can be. And uh, okay, so we are left with Ignition. I put three different coils on this saw and again the spark seems to be inconsistent. It fires, it doesn't. So I'm gonna bring you guys in here. Now I haven't fixed this yet so let's hypothesize together what I think is going on. Okay so you have your points here right? This opens and closes, okay? When it closes, here's your condenser. It sends power to this, and then that ends up going to your coil. Your coil mounts here, right? Well, I'm thinking, and this is a possibility, there's a camshaft on the end of the crank. That cam might be a little worn, which means when I adjust this to factory spec, it might be opening or closing too much, and uh, it's causing me all kinds of issues. So, and again, that's just a theory, guys. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rip all this out of here. I'm going to run this saw with no points, and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Um, this is a, for the purists out there, you're probably going to cringe, but I'm going to put an ignition module, a chip, in this saw, and I'm going to get rid of the points. Um, I used to run points in Harleys, never had a problem with them, but that was 20 years ago, and what I'm learning is it's getting harder and harder to find points in a condenser. They are around, but you gotta know what you're looking for. None of these condensers have a microfarad rating, you know, like the, the rating of how much voltage they store in that. Uh, nothing, none of these are stamped, so um, I could probably find a condenser and put it in here, but I'm going to try something because I almost have a feeling uh, this saw's never quite run right. It, ju it just hasn't. It, don't get me wrong, in the wood it pulls, but idling, restarting, it's really fussy. Uh, it tends to overfuel, which is not what I expected from this carb. These old SDCs, the way they're built, uh, they tune a little slower. They're a little more finicky, okay? So we're going to take out this coil and all or these points and this condenser and this wire, okay? And we're going to, uh, <coughs> excuse me guys, and we're going to, uh, we're going to put an ignition module in this thing or a chip. Just give me a second, I'm going to get set up here. Okay guys, I ordered several of these. Uh, Oregon 33-053, universal ignition module, okay? Uh, Google that, you'll find it. There's there's many different brands. Um, several companies have them. Okay, now it comes with this wiring diagram. Negative ground, which is what we're looking for. It also has a positive ground one. Okay, so if you look, if you look, here's your ground, right? Here's your ground. This wire goes to here, okay, and that goes to the coil. So what we're going to do is we're going to wire it in based on this diagram, okay. Here's the kit. It comes with a couple of wires. Here, I'll pull it out of the bag. It's a little shiny. These LED lights in here are super bright. Okay, it comes with a couple of wires. 
an ignition module. Okay, and and that's it. Uh, looks pretty simple, pretty easy. I'm gonna move you guys over here. So here, I'm gonna prop this up so you guys can see what the dealio is. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can do this on film for you guys. I'm gonna take. Ooh. Uh, I tend to make things very, very tight on this power saw and Loctite everything because these uh, these saws vibrate, especially with a bad front mount. I hope this thing's not going to be as buzzy. Okay, we're going to take these points out. Um, we're going to put this condenser back in the Promac 55. We're going to do some maintenance to that saw. That saw needs a little bit of work. And... Uh, I really, really enjoy running it. So, uh, Jack Fly, thank you, buddy. Again, guys, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Okay, there's a there's a bolt here. It's pretty cool that I'm running power saws that some of you folks sent me. Um, thank you. It's 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 pretty neat to be able to run stuff um, that I don't have access to around here. Um, I really I appreciate you guys out there. Okay, now I'm probably going to leave this cover or this points box in here because you never know. Fucking likes the points. He might want points in the saw one day or who knows, right? So I'm going to leave this in here and also I'll take it off when we're done. Uh, it protects the crank seal. So from crap getting in there and I, I think that's a good thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave it. Okay. Okay, guys, so I'm going to take off this wire here. Yeah, I'm just going to lay all these out because this stuff's all going back on this saw or on my 55. I'm thinking about porting that 55, but uh, that saw runs so good. It's got its few little issues. The main one is the oiler doesn't work. Um, so we're gonna have to have a look. I kind of understand how those oilers work now and uh, we'll dig into there, okay? Here, if you guys are looking for a PTO or a flywheel side seal CR5756 Chicago Rawhide, that is a standard seal that you can buy darn near anywhere. They are kind of hard to find, but you can order them. Uh, they're like 10 bucks if you don't want to go NOS. Uh, I don't do NOS seals because I find they're a little overpriced a lot of times. And uh, they're 30 years old. And sometimes you get them and the rubber's no good. And you you spent 30 bucks and you still need a seal. So, or whatever, you know. So, um, whenever possible, I will order a new seal. The, uh, the PTO side is, ugh, what brand is it? I want to say it's an SKF. But yeah, it's a, it's a six, it's a 6112 or a 6119. I got that right, folks. 6120 or 6119, I think. The 119 is a single lip, the 120 is a double lip. Um, that's the other side. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, uh, that's probably not going to work. I had this idea that I could mount this chip right here, and I think I'm going to make it work because uh, that looks like the best spot for it. And uh, I don't want to mess around with this too much. we got other things to do today. But uh, let's see. So I'm gonna have to find a longer screw for my application. Actually, this one might work. This in here. Again, guys, these old saws, you just gotta kinda roll with the punches. If you wanna work on them, they're a lot of fun, but uh, it's not like a modern saw. You know, it's like my 461, for instance. Um, 
I had that thing ported and back together in two hours running, like already in the wood. No tuning issues, no carb issues, no air leaks. So you gotta be you gotta be aware of this kind of stuff. If you want to work on these old saws, and please do. Um, if you have any questions, send me an email and I'll help you if I can. But uh, just be aware. These old saws, um, you got to be in it to win it. Okay, so my idea is I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this. I need a spacer, guys. Okay, I'm going to rig up a spacer of some kind, maybe another nut or a bolt, and I'm going to space it out so it doesn't hit this. Just give me a second here, guys. Okay, we're back. Let's show you what we got here. So I put a, I put a spacer. It's just a piece of uh, pipe, a longer screw, okay? And then I cut the wire shorter and soldered it here, okay? So according, according to the instructions, okay? So this is your ground, okay? Now this one, this one appears to go to the coil, okay? So I'm going to put the flywheel back on. I'm going to put the points cover back on, and, uh, okay, we'll put this back on here, put that back on, and, uh, we're going to wire up the coil and everything. I'll hit you guys back up in a couple minutes. Okay, so there's your points plate with no points. Another thing to make sure, make sure that these wires aren't going to touch. I'm going to zip tie this wire to this bottom wire for the coil, and, uh, so that it doesn't get burnt okay just be aware make sure because this one I have to space it out you could drill a hole through here and mount it flat but uh, I kind of like that um, it doesn't really say much on the instructions about how, how where to mount it but I also didn't read the instructions that hard so <laughs> Okay, we'll put this on, I'll mount the flywheel, and we'll put the coil on, and let's see if we have spark. Okay guys, so here's the finished product. Here's the chip, a screw and a spacer. The ground goes from here to the top post, bottom post, okay, loops around, goes to the coil, to your kill switch wire, okay, and here's your coil ground. That's it. Uh, let's see if this thing has spark. Um, let's mount the uh, recoil. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, kill switch on. Hope you guys can see that. I sure can. Give me a second. Okay, sometimes those LED lights in the shelf. Look how slow that look at the brightness of the spark. I'm barely pulling this thing over. Oh yeah. Okay. We're we're we've never had spark like that before. Okay friends, uh, I barred this thing up. Let's see how this thing behaves now. Uh, it starts. Um, we'll try her with no choke and uh, See how she goes. restart I'm just gonna make some quick cuts here and see how this thing behaves it definitely starts better it seems to idle better
Okay, so this this power saw doesn't have an air leak. I've tried several carbs on here. It's a little slow to get down to idle, but you know what, friends? I think that's just how this saw is gonna run. This saw is a huge flywheel, huge crankshaft, and a big clutch, and I think all we've added thousands of RPM to this power saw speed. All that mass is gonna take a little while to slow down. And uh, as long as it idles and settles down, restart. Okay, this thing never started like that before, friends. I'd have to give it throttle and, you know, uh, what's buried in this log one more time, and we're gonna have to get another load of logs because my cutting logs, I had exactly enough cutting logs for tests as winter lasted. So um, let's bury this thing one more time, and uh, we're gonna call this good. I'll uh, I'll probably take her into the woods and do some work with her and spend a day with her. But other than that, we're gonna call this finished. So there you guys go. If you have a McCullough or any power saw with bad points, you put that kit in there and you will solve all your problems. Um, this thing never ran right from day one. It's still picky on the carb a little bit, but that's how these old saws tune. You gotta tune them slow and really listen. So I'm happy. Take her easy. Later.